So today we're going to add some apples to the produce stand. So stay tuned and see how easy these are to make. Well, if we're going to make apples, first thing we need to do is look at some real apples. I've got a Golden Delicious and I don't remember what this one was. But we're looking at them for size and shape. I chose these two because they're about the same size and about the same shape. Um, color doesn't matter. We're actually going to use the same clay to make both apples because our color is going to come from chalk on the outside. So what do I learn from looking at these apples? Well, I learn that they fit in my hand. So I've got Mrs. Doll here. We're going to make sure that our miniature apples fit in her hand. So she's going to help us today. She's, she's usually on my table, whether you see her or not. She kind of lives here. We look at the shape of these apples. They're both more or less round. Some apples are more round. Some are less round. Uh, Red Delicious is almost square in shape in a lot of ways. So it's look at your different apples in the store and pick the one you like. We look at our colors. You can see yellows and and uh, reds on this one. There's a little bit of yellow. There's a lot of red and it's kind of streaky on this one. This will be a fun one to duplicate. This Golden Delicious is more of a a greenish yellow. So we will be finding a color for that. We have stems in the ends. Most of the apples are going to have stems. You don't have to put them in every one. We're actually going to use more of a dark brown stem simply because better contrast than the lighter one. And we have the blossom end. Um, on these apples they're a little lighter. I'm going to use a dark brown because that's the clay I have out today. And again it will show up more. Um, so that's important. So let me put these to the side and let me get our clay out and I'll show you what we've got going on. Alright, so we pre-baked a couple of little snakes here. And this is just a dark brown clay. What dark brown clay it is doesn't matter. And I've got some of the same clay here that I'm going to use to make the blossom in. Just a little bit to start with. We don't need very much. I might need to get a little more out, but it does, but we'll see. Because it's going to take very little. And these are just as thin of a snake as I could roll. And they're not even fully baked. You can see they're still a little bit soft. Just enough so they're a little bit firm so I can get them into the end of the apple. Our clay. Let me get a wet one. Because I was just handling the brown clay. I want to get that off of my fingers. Now we have our apple clay. This is mostly translucent. It's about three parts translucent to one part white. And I just put just the tiniest, tiniest little smidgen of a yellow. And it doesn't matter what yellow. You could use a green, depending on the apples you're making. I chose yellow because these tend to be more yellow at the top. Um, we want this for our apple because this will make it look more realistic. When you make an apple out of, say you're making a red apple, and you make it out of red clay, it looks too heavy. We need to have the white translucent with a tiny bit of color in it inside to make it look realistic. Get this off to the side. Let's cut off just a small amount. I'm going to work with a small amount of clay, about this much. And I'm going to make a snake that's probably around a quarter of an inch in diameter. And I'm not going to make all my apples exactly the same size or exactly the same shape. I'm going to cut this into little lengths. And now I'm going to take one of these. And I'm going to make a ball. And I'm going to put it in Mrs. Doll's hand. Whoops, I just smashed the ball. And yeah, that fits in her hand. So this is a good size. She can go over there out of my way now. So let me cut the rest of this snake up.
All right, now, we purposely did not make them all exactly the same. We want a little variation. We want some of our apples to be a little bigger than some of our other apples. Now for this step, this for up to this point, you're going to start the same no matter what apple you're making. You might vary your sizes, but up to this point, it wouldn't matter if you're making a Red Delicious or a Pink Lady or a Granny Smith or whatever apple you decide to make, this part is all the same. This rolling these balls. We're going to shape our apple from this. If you were making a yellow or a um, red delicious, you'd want to make almost a square round. But we're making these today. They're more rounded. Maybe another time we'll make some other apples. I know I made some last year or the year before in the caramel apple and apples and caramel apples. And they were different than these a little bit, but they all start out about the same. And I'm not even making perfect balls here, I'm just getting them rounded out so they're started to be a round shape. Alright, so this is our last little ball. So I'm going to get my chalk out and I'll be back and we'll start forming apples and putting some color on them. Alright, I think we'll start out with the Golden Delicious because this is probably the easiest one. It's, it's pretty much one color. Um, what I've done is I've taken two colors of chalk. This kind of a, a yellowy green and a pale yellow. And I've mixed them together in here. We'll see how this works. Now. Let's take our ball and let's poke down at the top. And let's take a needle tool and just a tiniest bit of this brown. And I mean a tiny, whoops, tiny bit of brown. And we're going to poke that in at the bottom. And I don't know where I'm getting these little specks on my clay from. Because I've cleaned my pile off. It shouldn't be speckled. Oh well. Now we're going to brush our clay. Alright. So we just brush on this yellow. And I like this yellow and green mixture. It's Good mix. And by using the chalk, we get a very translucent color to our apples. Now, while I've still got that, because I forgot to cut off my stems. off our tool and we will put our stem in and we have an apple. Let's do that again. First I need to make a level spot over here to set this. 
Okay. Make sure this is nice and round. Bossed, small ball stylus. And see, when we do this, we make the shape, the little shoulder area on these just automatically. Pick up just a little crumble of clay. A little tiny bit of brown. And by having this on the stylus, we can tell where this should go. Put it in so, it, so there's an imaginary line through the middle where the apple core would be. Just kind of poke that in. Brush. Trying to do this over my container so I don't get chalk all over my tile. To it. Looks like I kind of smushed it. Okay, that one got way too big a hole in it because I pushed it on too hard. All right, I'm. Well, let's see. We'll do another one. I'll use the smaller end of the ball stylus. I think that will work. Let's see if I can get closer. Let's see if I can get closer and still keep this in the camera. Okay, pick in. That makes a nice apple-y shape. And by poking it in with the dental pick, we're kind of breaking up that piece we're putting in. This. Ah, pull you guys out of the way. I'm going to have to grate some more chalk, too. Let's see, I need more chalk. Stay. And I try to never use my clay knife to do the chalk because you always end up with it stain on there a little bit and then you can get it all over your your next clay that you cut. So that's all there is to doing this. Whoops. Ah, I dropped my stem. Let's put this back in here. It's really all there. As I say that, I dropped the stem. Good job. So I'm going to make some more of these apples and then I'll show you what they look like and then we'll go on to the others. Alright, so I've got all these done. I'm going to go bake these at 230 degrees for eh, probably 10 minutes or so. They won't need more than that. And now it's time to start the other type of apple. So let me get set up and we'll do those. Alright, so now we're going to make the other apples. These guys. And they're yellow and red. We've got to be really careful when we're using the two colors together because we don't want our yellow and our red to turn orange. We want them to stay separate, so I'll show you that. And let's see if I can get down just a little bit closer and hopefully still stay in camera range while I'm working. So let's see. So basically, it's just the same thing. Because I picked two kinds of apples that are really closely, you know, shaped pretty closely pretty much the same, I guess I want to say. It's just more of the same stuff. So now one, two, separate brush for each color. Let's see if I can move over. 
over here. There we go. And I've got a yellow, pretty bright yellow, and a, a pretty bright red. And all the chalks I'm using today are out of the um, the chalk set from from um, Michaels, the one that's under their store brand. So I, I'm trying to use those as much as possible lately because I know they're easier to get than some of the other brands so you can match the colors easier. All right. So I pretty much cover especially up at the top because I want most the yellow at the top. Now, different brush for the red. And I'm kind of brushing up from the bottom. And then a little bit down. I'm trying to keep vertical strokes with the red. There. So now we have a blending. A little more yet. A little more red in some places. And now the same thing with our stems. We're using the same stems as before. See, I want a little more yellow on the top of this. Where's the camera? There. And now we have that apple. So let's do this again. And I like to wipe my fingers off with the wet wipe between each one because otherwise you're just going to have a mess if you don't do that. Because these chalks are going to just make a mess all over everything if you're not careful. Tiny bit of the brown stuck into the bottom of the dental pick or any sharp tool. You can use a you could even use a sewing pin for this stuff if you wanted to. So we have something that looks like that. Now our yellow. I'm going to try to keep the yellow, especially coat the yellow at the top. The red in vertical strokes all over our apple. And when you look at a box of these apples, some are more red, some are more yellow. So it's okay if you have variations in your apples. In fact, that's kind of important. If you don't, they're not going to look, you know, as realistic. And put the stem in. Alright, so I am going to finish off the rest of these apples and then I'll be back. Alright, so I've got those all made. Now, we don't need to have perfect apples all the way at the bottom of our box because I'm going to display these in a box. So what I'll do, I'm just going to clean my fingers off, I'm going to cut the remainder of the clay, and I may need to mix a little extra, but I'll get you the idea here. And these can be a little bit bigger. They don't have to be as precise in size. Cutting those, and I'll have some TLS. I'm going to just put up a, a little bit of TLS in the bottom, because I want this to stick to the bottom of the box. And these, I mean, if I didn't have any extra clay, I could just use some white or translucent. It doesn't really matter because they're not going to show very much. They're just going to show a little bit through between the apples. And I did this with the green ones too, with the yellow, the golden delicious. I did the same thing with that box. But I figured this one's going to be a little more complicated because of the two colors. See if I have enough. Okay, we're going to run out of clay here. So let's get a little bit more clay. I'll just mix some white and some translucent. I'm not even worrying about the yellow in it. So I just want to get. Some balls of clay in the bottom. I like to do this with balls of clay rather than just a flat piece. 
And the difference in color won't show a lot through here because we're going to have this covered with a layer of apples. Normally I would have went ahead and mixed the same color up as I had before, but it's fine. All right, now, got that. Now I'm going to take my chalk. I've got some leftover chalk here. And I'm going to brush it in there. And brush in some yellow. And then I'll brush it with some red. I'm actually going to just dump the rest of the red chalk right in there. And some more. I want to have plenty of red. I want it mainly red. All right. Now, this will bake right along with our apples for about 10 minutes at 230 degrees, and then I'll be back. All right. All our apples are baked. You can see I did the same thing in this box as I did in the other one. Now I'm going to put in some TLS. This little, and I'm going to just put these guys in here. And there will probably be a few loose on the top. That's okay. It's, um, you can go in and glue those in individually if you want to later. I'm okay with a few being loose. And here's our box. The red apples. And I may have to go back and make more of these, but I'll do that later. And remember, as long as you don't exceed the temperature, you can rebake your clay over and over and over again. So it's okay if you need. To. Like I might decide to make some more apples later, maybe tomorrow or something. I'm out of time today, so I'll probably make some more tomorrow, and I'll just add a little more TLS and put them right on top. But these are going to go into my oven at again at 230 degrees for oh probably about five minutes or so. They don't need to bake very long. And that's all there is to making apples. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure and check us out on Facebook and uh, check out the blog. The blog always has more things about what we've done, or little side stories and whatevers, usually. Um, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.